Hi Fox, how are you doing? A couple of very interesting tournaments starting right now in July and one of them we have the ACP uh, which means the Associ Association of Chess Professionals Golden Classics going on in Bergamo, Italy. We have strong players like Jobava, uh, Savino Brunello and Vocaturo from Italy. We have Emil Sutovsky. Uh, who else? We had lots of interesting players like Wesley So and Nepomniachi they are playing so uh, seven players in this tournament which means in each round one player will not play a game but will be helping the commentary and uh, there is another interesting point here that uh, adjournment of games is allowed after five hours of play if necessary although uh, of course computer resistance is allowed there so an inter interesting thing here like in the old days so let us have a quick recap of the first round. We have three round, three games going on in, in in each round. In the first round, we had uh, one of the most interesting games played between uh, Badur Jobava from Georgia, very original and creative GM, against the local player Sabino Brunello. We had a Slav defense. Brunello plays e6, the classical semi-slav. Uh, well, the game goes on in quiet ways so far. Now bishop e7, queen c2, developing pieces. Now Brunello plays somehow a strange looking move, but with the fairly basic idea of developing this bishop. Now bishop d3. Knight h5, black is looking for peace exchanges. Queen takes and white just castles. A quiet and positional game so far. g6 is played here to avoid white from having any kind of tricks and attacks on this light square diagonal to allow black to castle. And now, interesting move, rook f b1. Uh, I mean, a, a beginner may be very surprised with this move, kind of trapping your own rook on a1, but this is this has the very classical idea of playing a minority attack, very in, typical in this kind of Carlsbad structures, trying to create weaknesses in, in black's pawns. Uh, black just castles, and there it goes, b4. a6, a4, the knight relocates to g7, and now knight d2. The knight probably wants to go to c5 or maybe even a5 to join the minority attack. Bishop f5, knight b3, these bishops are exchanged here, and knight e6. Well, more or less balanced position now. This knight has is protecting c5, uh, c5 is centralized. g3, never allowing a knight on uh, f4. Now rook f d8 centralizing pieces. Black is doing fine here, shouldn't have much problems. h4, Jobava jumps into c4 with the knight. Sorry, it's uh, uh, black, black jumps uh, with the knight on c4 and Jobava puts the knight on a5. An interesting square. I guess if takes b takes a5 white's compensation for this bad pawn structure is this open file but Sabino didn't went for it after knight a5 he goes knight d6 back with the knight and now Jobava goes with b5 uh, queen c7 attacks uh, the knight here so knight goes back a takes a takes rook takes Badur Jobava takes with the knight, keeping the brook on the b file. Now knight f5, knight e2, c5. Uh, white doesn't take there. He first plays b6. After queen d6, knight back to the game with knight c2, allowing if white if black wants to to create past pawn but I think this wouldn't be that great of idea because this pawn um, may be a little uh, weakness this knight could be come here the other knight here and 
the pawn on d5 would be under heavy fire. That's why Brunello just takes on d4. Knight takes, knight takes, knight takes. And here Sabino Brunello finds a way to uh, sacrifice a piece and uh, well get lots of activity against the white king. He takes on g3. F takes, queen takes. Now we have a series of checks. And rook e8 uh, with the idea of com going, I guess, to the second file, have a very dangerous attack. Queen e2 stops that, but black keeps checking. Queen g2, but queen takes on e3 with check. King, queen f3 and queen d3. Brunello got three pawns for his piece with certainly plenty of compensation. Now rook e1. Rook a4, the knight is under attack, and here we get a very, very interesting move by uh, Yobaba, knight c6, sacrificing the knight. Really interesting and creative play. Uh, it is uh, interesting to know that rook e8 check, king g7, and knight e6 check is not losing thanks to king h6. Because otherwise, um, I mean, black cannot just take because this is checkmate in one move. Very beautiful piece sacrifice to checkmate, but king a6 avoids that. Otherwise, uh, well, instead of that, rook knight c6 is what Jobaba plays. Now b takes and b7. Uh, white gets a very strong pass pawn about to um, promote as compensation for the piece. Now he's down three pawns. Rook b4, and here, uh, well, Jobaba played the rook e7 move, uh, defending the pawn and attacking f7. But after this move, um, the game went went on to be drawn. Let us see another move which uh, seems to be stronger. At least that's what the computer says, and it absolutely feels uh, much more natural to check on e8, king g7, and to promote. Now there are some messy complications here. Of course, if rook takes b8, well, rook takes, uh, white has a rook for 3-4 pawns. This feels like should be winning. Um, but instead, after this, uh, black has this queen b1 check. And here, uh, white has a couple of options. Uh, of course, if king goes up, now rook takes here. And it's black winning, he has, he's up 4 pawns. Instead, white must give up that queen and go back with the rook. It seems rook e1. Now, uh, well, it seems there is uh, the way, this way of playing. After rook takes on b8, obviously, uh, queen d4 check. Just an intermediate move to improve your queen's position. King g8, and now white takes here. King g2, and well, pretty interesting balanced position, which feels like much better for white, but probably Jobaba considered to be it to be uh, not enough to win, so he played this rook e7 after rook b4. But uh, after queen b1 check, king h2, f5, uh, they went back to rook e1 and they agreed a draw without continuing the game after the adjournment of the game. So there it goes. This is the first game. Let us take a look at other games of this tournament. And the, uh, in the second game, uh, Wesley saw from Philippines, still from the Philippines, you know, he's moving up to the US Chess Federation, at least trying to, is playing Emil Sutovsky from Israel. We have a King's Indian defense with G3, Fianchetto variation, G3 variation of the King's Indian. Bishop G2, very solid way of playing this. Knight C3, Black Castled, Knight F3, and knight c6 is what black plays. Castles, bishop f5, putting lots of pressure in this e4 square, not allowing white to play e4, but white plays d5. 
knight a5 attacks the pawn which is defended with the knight on d2 this is all theory black is on time to play c6 challenging white's pawn structure in the center now still theoretical before knight takes well this is interesting if uh, white just takes on c4 then after knight takes d5 uh, there is a pin on this diagonal the knight is the knight and the bishop are attacking c3 which is so seems going to fall it seems reasonable for white to give up the exchange because he already has one two pawns he could take here black could take on a1 and now the knight goes back to e3 with a pretty unbalanced position interesting one uh, both players have bishop pair and white has a couple of knights for a rook and two pawns the bishop could go back or whatever but this didn't happen after knight takes c4 white takes on c6 and knight takes d2 c takes b7 rook here bishop there now d5 is what black plays blocking this bishop on g2 from defending the pawn rook c1 rook takes on b7 and a3 defending the b4 pawn knight d4 i think black has a very comfortable position out of the opening not much problems for him it seems here are some simplifications d takes and bishop c3 black uh, create precise counterplay here uh, to neutralize this 2 against 1 with a5 now bishop takes king takes and queen c2 attacking the pawn but with some precise play black uh, finds himself in a comfortable equal position now queen b8 and after a takes rook takes b4 queen went back and this is an absolutely drawish position position and uh, they agreed to draw Wesley So and Emil Sutovsky here so let us see the last game Zoltan Almashi from uh, Hungary was playing Jan Nepomniachi from Russia in this game it starts as an English opening symmetrical English and we see this d5 counter-attack in the center we saw this continuation a couple of times in Norway chess 2014 just cup like a month ago c takes knight takes g3 the knight develops to c6 bishop g2 knight back to c7 a3 rook b8 this seems to be a speciality of nepomniachi he has played the, this before but really nobody else in the world seems to have played this uh, uh, lots of times so seems like a speciality of his i guess he wants to play b5 white just castles and e5 rook b1 someday white would like to play b4 bishop e7 d3 and black castles now bishop to e3 developing pieces knight e6 and b4 well some inter interesting complications may happen here for instance if c takes b4 a takes b4 uh, if white if black for instance takes on b4 white, white could take on e5 because if knight takes the bishop on b4 would have would be hanging so some piece of calculations would be needed here not to be lost but i guess not very difficult for the G, these gms after b4 nepomniachi just puts a strong knight on d4 from here now b takes bishop takes and queen c1 to defend a3 also defending e3 now bishop g4 knight takes on d4 e takes and although this is a fork white has an intermediate move attacking the queen queen goes to a5 and now knight to b5 the bishop on c5 is under attack now but nepomniachi just ignores it he takes on e2 if queen takes here uh, bishop takes bishop takes white would have a couple of bishops uh, against the rook and the pawn interesting position but after bishop takes e2 uh, almasi won went bishop d2 chasing that queen queen to b6 
And now we see after knight takes d4, there is an attack on the queen, but Nebuchadnezzar says, I don't care. He just sacrifices the queen here. A very interesting queen sacrifice. He takes on d4, and there it goes. White takes the queen. A takes b6, rook e1, and bishop takes on d3. Uh, white, uh, black has a couple of pieces, a rook and the knight, and the pawn for the queen. In addition to that, he has the bishop pair, and well, which is more important, all his light, light pieces are very well centralized and controlling lots of squares. This bishop is very cool here, the knight absolutely dominant here. So it seems white has, uh, black has uh, enough compensation for the queen. White looks for, uh, looks to improve his position, queen d1, but now bishop c2, queen goes to g4, bishop back to f5, queen f4, Nepomniachi improves his rook's positions, bishop c3, attacking the defender of the f5 bishop, bishop d3, bishop f1, bishop back, and rook d1. Now we have knight d6, attacking both pieces at the same time, but white can get away and defend on e1 h5, queen e2, knight d4 attacks the queen again, forcing the exchange, queen f3, bishop c5, and a4. White tries to undermine this b6 pawn, rook takes, queen takes, white attacks the rook, rook e6, and after some more moves to an attack here on f2, f3 was played. It was clear that neither player had a clear way to break through. Although after some moves we will see that black even has some possibilities. Um, it is white who must be careful in this position because his king somehow is exposed here and white must be careful with forks and pins etc. There is a threat here to check which could be annoying, so king g1, bishop back, bishop b3, bishop c5, and after a couple of moves, they just agreed to draw. So there it goes, the first round of this tournament. All games were drawn, but uh, especially the one between Jobava and Sabino Brunello, a very interesting game. Hoping to see uh, more interesting and fighting chess in the next rounds of this tournament. Thanks for watching.